You probably already have some understanding of where everyday items come from, but most of us are so far removed from the process that we might only have a rough idea for a lot of the products we use every day. We know that metals are mined from the ground as ore, plastic is manufactured using petroleum, and that cardboard comes from trees. But in the case of a common e-waste item like a laptop, there's a lot more to it. A typical laptop computer has a circuit board manufactured from fiberglass and precious metals such as silver and gold. Copper, aluminum, and magnesium will be used to create a chassis, distribute power, and manage heat. Any modern laptop will use lithium in the battery for energy storage. The screen, keyboard, and outer shell will likely be made from plastic. That's a long list of resources, and we haven't even touched on packaging, instructions, or the resources involved in the logistics of delivering the product to the end user. Eventually, the laptop makes it into the hands of the consumer, where its average functional life is somewhere between three and five years. Once that time is up, the laptop is discarded and the cycle begins again. So where does an e-waste recycler fit into this scenario? The truth is that an electronic recycler can play a crucial role in every step of a product life cycle, long before the end user makes the pivotal decision to have the laptop recycled with an e-waste services provider. Before a product is manufactured, the e-waste recycling process has already begun. Engineering samples, dyes, and specialized test equipment will likely be used during the research and development cycle and sent off to an electronics recycler once the laptop goes into production. During the manufacturing stage, products that don't meet quality control standards are sent to e-waste, along with excess parts and board trimmings, among other things. An electronic recycler plays a role in the distribution process as well. Units that are damaged in shipping, in-store demos, product returns, and overstock can all be handled by an e-waste specialist. The last and most impactful step is when the consumer makes the crucial decision to send their laptop off to be recycled instead of throwing it out to ultimately end up in a landfill or worse. Now that we've spoken a little bit about the e-waste life cycle, Let's get into what we do as an electronics recycler from the perspective of a laptop discarded at the end of its service life. Our role begins with collection. We help to coordinate packing and shipping of the items that will be coming to us in the most efficient way possible to help reduce our carbon footprint. Once the equipment makes it through our doors, it's tagged and inventoried into our system. From there, items are sorted into categorized streams to ensure that each type of material is handled appropriately. This is a large part of what an electronic recycler does behind the scenes, and it's at this stage that our laptop comes into the picture once discovered by our sorting team. Because laptops are among many data-containing devices, they're given special attention to ensure that all data and storage devices are removed and sanitized. Now that our laptop has been cleared of any personal data, we have our first opportunity to complete the life cycle. Items that are relatively new and free of heavy cosmetic or functional damage are refurbished or repaired and reintroduced back into the market whenever possible. Reuse is considered first, as it's the simplest and often most cost-effective form of recycling. Unfortunately, our laptop is beyond its usable life, and it's also showing some signs of heavy wear. It's effectively scrap at this point. Scrap material that's not suitable for reuse will be dismantled into the basic components used to manufacture it. Our laptop will be demanufactured by hand and sorted by the separate metals, boards, and plastics originally used to create it. Other items from the same load could be shredded, sheared, or otherwise processed into raw commodities using specialized equipment. Once we've collected enough of our processed raw materials, they'll be shipped to partner facilities that specialize in each specific commodity we've generated. For example, the plastics are sent to a plastics recycler who further segregates by type and color to be granulated. Metals like steel, aluminum, and copper are taken in by metal yards who accumulate them in massive volumes. They're then shipped to a smelter to be refined and ultimately become ingots for use in future products. Circuit boards are sent to specialized smelters that use thermal energy to recover the precious metals found in the circuits and components. For all specialty recyclers, the end goal is the same. To create a clean, raw material that can be sold back to manufacturers to begin the life cycle all over again. Maybe our laptop's plastic casing will become the bezel to a new smartphone. The metals could contribute to new electric vehicles, and the precious metals could find practical or ornamental use. No matter the application, these efforts help to reduce our dependence on finite, raw material that needs to be harvested, refined, and shipped at an increasing cost to our environment.